Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers a Diels-Alder reaction experiment. This is part two, reflux and isolation of the product. The first reagent I'll add is maleic anhydride. Our bottle of maleic anhydride comes as briquettes rather than a powder, so to make it easier to weigh out, I'm going to grab one of these chunks and grind it in a mortar and pestle. Since maleic anhydride has irritating and corrosive dust, I'll need to do this operation in the fume hood. The bottle you have may already be ground into a powder, and if that's the case, that's fine. I'm grinding far more than I'm going to need for this experiment here. I'll take the excess and either give it to a classmate that needs ground maleic anhydride, or I'll put it in a bottle that says ground maleic anhydride for the next student to use. It should not be put back in the original bottle. Now that I have it ground, I can go weigh it out. Here I'm putting a weighing boat on the balance, and I'll zero it by pressing the tear button. Then I'm going to dispense one gram of this material. Here's the structure of maleic anhydride. It will function as the dienophile in today's experiment, reacting with a diene in a Diels-Alder reaction. The reaction vessel in today's experiment is going to be a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. I'm going to put the maleic anhydride into this flask using a powder funnel. The next reagent I'll weigh out is 3-sulfalene. It's also commonly known as butadiene sulfone, so you might see it as one way or the other on the bottle. This is a precursor to the diene in today's experiment, and when heated, it'll fragment into these two pieces, 1,3-butadiene and sulfur dioxide. The 1,3-butadiene is the diene and the Diels-Alder reaction. Now I'll add the 3-sulfalene to the flask with the maleic anhydride. Next, I'll measure out the solvent for today's experiment, which is xylenes. Xylenes is a mixture of three isomers, ortho, meta, and para. I'll measure out two milliliters of it here. Then I'll add it to the reaction flask. Next, I'll add a few boiling chips. In the next step, we're going to reflux this reaction. We'll heat it to boiling, and these boiling chips will help smooth out that boiling. Next, I'll set up a reflux apparatus to heat this reaction mixture. The point of a reflux apparatus is to make a reaction hot, but not remove the solvent. That heat is going to provide activation energy to promote the thermal cracking of the 3-sulfalene and also the Diels-Alder reaction. Here are some of the components of the reflux apparatus. I have a condenser placed vertically with cooling water going in through the bottom and out through the top. There's a heating mantle heat source that's plugged into a variable transformer, which is plugged into the wall current. Now I'm hooking up the flask and securing it with a blue Keck clamp. Then I'll lower the condenser and reaction flask into the heating mantle, making sure that there's good close contact between the bottom of the flask and the mantle. The thermal cracking of 3-sulfalene produces SO2 gas, which is corrosive, and we want to avoid breathing that in, so we're going to vent that out of the lab by attaching a tube to the top of the condenser and routing the hose to a benchtop fume hood, which gets vented out the lab. Then I'll turn on the variable transformer and get the cooling water flowing through the condenser. As the reaction heats up, you'll notice the solid reagents begin to dissolve in the xylene. Then eventually you'll see bubbles. Eventually those bubbles become vigorous and vapor will travel up the apparatus and hit the condenser and condense back to a liquid and fall back down. The up-down motion of the solvent, vaporizing, rising, condensing, and falling, is what we mean by reflux. The process is being sped up here for purposes of the video. In real time, the apparatus heats up more slowly. When the system has come to equilibrium, you should be able to see a reflux ring. This is the transition point between vapor and solvent in the condenser. Ideally, this should be in the lower third of the condenser. I've indicated it here with an arrow. Increasing or decreasing the dial on the variable transformer will increase or decrease the vigor of the boiling, but the temperature will remain the same, which is the boiling point of the solvent. In this case, it's the boiling point of xylenes. The reaction is now refluxed for 30 minutes, and I'll turn off the variable transformer and raise the apparatus out of the heating mantle and allow it to cool. Now I'm measuring out 6 milliliters of xylenes, and I'll be adding this to the reaction vessel. Now I'm removing the reaction vessel from the reflux apparatus and I'll stand it up in a beaker. Then I'll add that 6 milliliters of xylene that I measured out in the previous step to the flask. The reason for adding the extra xylene at this point is to make sure that all of the product is dissolved. We need to decant away the boiling chips, so we need to make sure that all of the product is in solution at this point. 
We'll crystallize it out later in the next step. Now I'm decanting the reaction solution out of the round bottom flask into a small beaker. Here I'm just pouring carefully to remove the solution, but leave the boiling chips behind in the flask. Now that I have the boiling chips removed, I'm going to add petroleum ether to crystallize the Diels Alder product and allow me to filter it. Here I'm adding petroleum ether, which is a poor solvent for the Diels Alder product. Xylene is a good solvent, petroleum ether is a poor solvent. So when I add enough petroleum ether, eventually I'll make the solvent such an inhospitable place for the Diels Alder product that it won't be able to remain dissolved and it'll phase separate as crystals. Here we're seeing a cloudiness and now we're starting to get crystals forming. Here I'm showing the beaker from the top so you can get a little bit better view of the crystals. This product is probably pretty pure, but to get it even more pure, we're going to recrystallize it in the next step. First though, we have to vacuum filter it. I have a vacuum filtration apparatus set up here, which consists of a Buchner funnel sitting on top of a filter flask that has a hose going to a water aspirator vacuum source. Some of the crystals are stuck to the side of the beaker, so I'm taking a spatula here and scraping them off. This will allow me to pour them into the Buchner funnel more easily. Now I'm turning the faucet water full on. This is going to generate vacuum and allow me to suction filter the product. I'll take a piece of pre-cut filter paper and stick it into the Buchner funnel, making sure it fits nicely over all the holes. Now I'm swirling the flask with the crystals and I'm pouring to vacuum filter them. I have a little bit of petroleum ether in this Erlenmeyer flask. I'll rinse the crystals in the Buchner funnel a little bit with this petroleum ether. I'm pulling the hose off here to break the vacuum before I turn off the faucet. This prevents water from getting sucked into the filter flask. Here are the crystals of the crude product. They have a bit of an off-white color. The pure product is completely white. We'll remove the impurity, giving them a little bit of color in the next step in recrystallization. In the next video in the series, I'll cover recrystallization and melting point analysis. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.